for joining us. We welcome you. I'm Natasha Atwaters, the director, executive director of Children First Communities and Schools, and we're excited to share with you today our vision for a family-friendly, affordable Buncombe. Such a vision incorporates thinking about the connection between families and economic development. Healthy, economically mobile families are a cornerstone of a prosperous community and sustained workforce. As Asheville and Buncombe County becomes unaffordable for families, for more families, we risk losing not only employees, entrepreneurs, but also a generation of civic and cultural engagement. For example, PTA parents, faith community members, volunteers, board members, artists, and neighbors. Leadership from three broad-based community coalitions, Asheville Buncombe Preschool Planning Collaborative, the Success Equation, and Asheville Regional Transit Coalition have come together to support a visionary plan for investing Mission Health property tax revenue. This plan builds on past successes and current best practices to accomplish the following. Expand high quality affordable preschool to all children, increase the number of apartments and homes affordable for working families, and to connect families to jobs, schools, and amenities with frequent and reliable transit. As a parent and director of Children First Communities and Schools, I know that these three issues are at the heart of family success and the key to our future as a community. For some in our community, they may be one paycheck away from homelessness, or one missed ride away from un being unemployed, or unable to even accept an employment offer because they do not have childcare. The Family Friendly Affordable Buncombe Vision provides an opportunity to collectively address availability and access to these supports so that families are able to not only live in our community, but to contribute and thrive. Today we'll hear from other parents and advocates, and our goal is to inspire our community to think big and think families as we contemplate the opportunity for public investment of the new property tax funds from the Mission Health Sale. Caitlin Geyer. Caitlin is the parent, is a parent and a staff member at Verner Early Education Center. Thanks, Caitlin. Good morning. Um, like Natasha said, my name is Caitlin Geyer. I live in Black Mountain with my husband and our two-year-old daughter. I am also the enrollment coordinator at Verner Center for Early Learning, which serves Buncombe County children from birth through age five in multiple early learning centers as well as a home-based program. My husband and I absolutely love living in Black Mountain. We honestly wonder for how long we're going to be able to stay here. We are fortunate to have good jobs, a house we can afford, and access to quality childcare for our daughter. But when I went back to work after maternity leave, I couldn't find full time childcare, and I work at a childcare center. The stress and financial burden really took a toll on our family. Thankfully, we were able to get her a spot at a new family childcare home in Arden. I live in Black Mountain and I work in East Asheville, but we drove her to Arden and back every day. This solution would not have worked for families who lack reliable transportation. My professional experience has shown me that our story is not at all unique in Buncombe County. I talk daily with families who are desperately trying to find early education for their child so they can work. There's just not enough childcare in the county for the number of families that have young children. These parents tell me that everywhere they've called has a wait list and ask, out of frustration, what we're doing to fix the problem. We talk with parents who've lost their jobs or who can't get a job because they don't have reliable childcare. And without a steady income, they lose their housing and or mode of transportation. Some parents are willing to travel, no matter how inconvenient, as long as it'll give them the childcare that they so desperately need. And for others, this isn't an option because they don't have a car and there's no public transportation option for them. I could talk for hours about how these, or how these challenges affect families in Buncombe <laughs> County, but I've also seen how getting a spot for a child can have a positive impact on a family. I know a mom with a toddler who's been transient and unemployed. Because she couldn't find reliable childcare, she lost her housing due to the lack of income. Now she does have a spot in one of our centers. She's been able to start working and she'll be able to start saving some money to secure housing of her own. It's because we're able to provide free or low-cost childcare services that stories like this are possible. I'm here today because I understand how hard it is to raise a young family in Buncombe County, and I urge our local leaders to invest in childcare, affordable housing, and public transportation to make this county an affordable, family-friendly place to call home. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Next, we'll hear from Jeff Heck. He's the Chief Executive Officer of Mountain Area Health Education Center. Jeff. Thank you. So in addition to being the CEO of Mayhek, I'm also uh, a practicing physician, and I also have five children, 11 grandchildren, two on the way. 
um, some of them actually live here, and um, and uh, I care deeply about our community. Mehek um, takes care of uh, we, we do we have primary care, we have uh, we have OBGYN care, we have dental care. We, we we have a significant role in the safety net population in in Asheville. For example, we see 92% of all the Medicaid deliveries in the county. And um, I thought just for purposes of today, I would describe to you what it's like for my daughter-in-law uh, to have her prenatal visit and what it's like for many of our patients. So when my daughter-in-law uh, has an appointment uh, for her next pregnancy, my 12th uh, grandchild, <laughs> Um, she drives to my uh, to, to my house. My wife looks after the after her child. She goes to her uh, office visit. Whether it's raining or not raining, she has no problem uh, with the transportation or getting in. She's always on time. She gets her prenatal care done, and then um, she goes home, um, picks up her child, and and and, uh, and goes back goes back home, and may go to work, and may leave the child with us. For our patients, uh, many of our patients, it's more like this. First of all, there is no easily affordable childcare, and to have a prenatal visit, she may have to go uh, drop her, her child off with her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law may uh, have a, a boyfriend who's abusive or using substances. She may have some anxieties about that. Um, she also may have to take uh, public transportation, which could require several transfers, and it could be standing out in the rain waiting for one, and then she'd get to Mayhek, she'd have her prenatal visit. Um, then she'd have to do the same process in reverse. Um, if you don't think that doesn't affect health outcomes in our community, you're not thinking rationally about it because actually we know there's great studies that show that the social determinants of health, things like education and housing and transportation, all have, and childcare, all have probably more impact on health outcomes than actually the quality of care. We have great quality of care in this community, but we need another step, and that is we need to address the social determinants of health, which the Dogwood Trust has the opportunity to do that in two ways. One is to do it through the foundation, but the second is through the increased uh, tax revenue. And at Mayhek, we are very supportive of this project. Um, we want it for our patients. We want you to help us reduce the number of high-risk pregnancies that we have and poor outcomes. Um, we'd love to see that. Thank you, Jeff. And next, we're going to hear from Ebony Grayson Reese. Uh, she's a parent and lives in Canada. Hi, my name is Ebony Grayson Reese, and I am a parent that understands the challenges of making ends meet. For the last four years, the lack of affordable and available child care has touched my family. I have a son, a four-year-old son named Joseph, and due to the cost of child care, I had to stop working as a teacher assistant because the cost of sending him to child care was half of my income. I went on a search from NC Pre-K, early Head Start to Head Start. My son, was denied numerous of times from attending early childhood education institutions. We as a family were told funding is limited, therefore spots are limited. And as I walked away from my third preschool with my son, it hurt my heart that my community refused to help my child. And the only reason he was personally denied is because my community didn't have enough money to service all of its children. I would like to witness a Buncombe County that service all of its children's needs, mm -hmm. not denying, lacking, or neglecting one child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I call on my local leaders to invest in families mm -hmm. so that this place we call home, Buncombe County, is a county that is family friendly, affordable, and invest in its families. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
in the way that this, oh, I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's a parent that yes. I was working with when I was a teacher assistant. She, uh, she, her child class was the last class I got to serve, and then I left, and my son is there, so we know each yeah. other personally. Wow. So, right, so she didn't get to teach beyond, and my kid certainly did benefit from early childhood development. So I want to thank you so much, uh, first of all, uh, for that, because my family was directly impacted. Um, my name is Rochelle Sorensen Cox. I have lived, played, worked, volunteered, and navigated through life in Asheville City since 1995. Um, like many people, I spent a few days here. Goodness, girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me. So, I spent a few days here on vacation and left knowing that I wanted to live in a city like this one. I grew up in rural Utah um, as a Mormon with nothing around but your community. So that feel here in Asheville was definitely what drew me to this place. I have worked with many of you in this room, Jim Barrett, since the beginning of time in Hendersonville, um, my first job here in Asheville. My resume reads like a, it's all over the place. I have had the ability to work at places like Malaprops, The Gap at the Asheville Mall, The Mountain Express, for Asheville Parks and Recreation. I started Girls on the Run of Western North Carolina and spent a lot of time in this building. Vicki, I'm sure, got tired of my kid running the halls because <laughs> when she wasn't at the Y, she was in my pocket. And Ray is one of the best nannies in the county, I'm just saying, United Way Ray. Thank you for him. So currently I work at Tops for Shoes and I moonlight a couple nights a week at Farm Burger. So technically I have one of those sexy tourist jobs, a couple of them, that help feed this economic engine. We're on every list of everywhere and we invite everyone to come every weekend. I sell them shoes, I sell them hamburgers, and I clean up after them. I like my position in this community. I'm currently making a living wage, which on paper is lovely. However, I'm bus dependent. I don't have a car. Through a couple bad decisions and some unfortunate events, I am forced to ride the bus. No one rides the bus because they want to. And if they do, they sure as heck don't need a transfer. I had a great job at a healthcare uh, company on Sweeten Creek, and I could not reasonably and easily get to work to keep that job. I took Hendersonville Road, I was relying on the S1 and the S3, and it was a nightmare. Getting there was pretty easy, but I walked a half a mile to a bus stop in the rain. Cars love to splash you in the rain. Got to work, soggy and miserable. I would have to backtrack almost a quarter of a mile and hike up and over railroad tracks to get to work. If I missed the bus, it would cost me an hour's wages to Uber if I could get an Uber to come to my house. So that job, and by the time, sometimes the buses would be um, broken down and no real-time updates, and I'm standing, waiting. Finally, when my Uber comes, when the bus drives by, I'm deflated. I'm late picking up my child from school, who now, thank goodness, has aged out of childhood education, early childhood, and is in public school at Claxton, um, her fifth year. I'm excited that Miss Ebony just told me she's gonna be at the middle school and further guide my kids, so yay for you. Um, but early childhood development helped me get to college but I didn't go that far. Um, my kid being at Asheville City Preschool made it so I could go to AB Tech, but I maxed out with an associate's degree. I am 47 years old, working entry level positions, and I'm housing insecure. I have, my landlord decided he could turn his lovely apartment into a really great short term rental space, and I got displaced. For the last 18 months, I have been thankfully, in this community, living um, in rooms that I rent from friends. It's not sustainable. The family court system certainly doesn't love it. It does not look like I'm a stable parent on paper. For me to not look like a stable parent on paper is heartbreaking beyond belief. So to be housing insecure here is just frightening and scary and unnecessary. Un necessary mm -hmm. so Franzi Charon said one of my favorite quotes about Asheville ever at the state of downtown uh, a couple years ago and she said what makes Asheville likable doesn't necessarily make it livable mm -hmm. 
I am on the bus every morning with the chefs, the waitresses, the sanitation workers, the grocery store clerks, the bakers, the housekeepers, the gas station attendants, the people who serve beer, the people who make beer, the people who sell things to the people we invite here. I need it not to be so scary to have a roof over my head and I need it to be reasonable for me to get to work. So early childhood development helped my family. Thank you, please continue that support. And now give us a house, give us a ride to work, give us a sidewalk so I can walk. I'll walk the mile home, but I will die on Johnston Boulevard if I try to walk from Haywood Road to my house at Johnston Boulevard. I will die. So it's like that. Um, gosh, thank you. So my bullet points are these bullet points. I'm a committed citizen of this town. I wanna stay here. My child's other parent is a firefighter. Our family could not be more invested in the health, welfare, success, and oh my gosh, promoting Asheville. Um, just please help us help you. Thank you for this opportunity today. I uh, want to take some liberty and just say thank you to our panelists for sharing your personal experiences with having to deal with trying to afford to be here. Mm -hmm. And um, I truly appreciate your candidness about it. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, we'll hear from Amy Berry, who is Executive Director of the Buncombe Partnership for Children. Thank you. I um, I feel like we've we've heard the stories, we've heard the experiences. Um, I hope the impact of that has hit you hard. Um, we know the lack of housing security and quality preschool have a negative impact on our youngest children. There's a ripple effect, right? You have increased stress on children's early development, which literally affects their brain development, and in turn, school readiness, health, and future success. Access to reliable public transit with routes and a schedule that allows family to access childcare and their place of work is essential to their stability. We've heard that from our friends here. For years, employers in Asheville and Buncombe County have recognized that the top three barriers to recruiting and retraining retaining employees <clears throat> as housing, transportation, and childcare. For families who provided input to the Asheville Buncombe Preschool Planning Collaborative's Preschool Expansion Plan, that's a mouthful, and to Children First Communities and Schools Success Equation, identified affordable housing, transportation, and childcare, um, access to transportation and, um, as barriers to their employment. All three are key to economic mobility, health, safety, and creating a foundation for children's learning and future success. So we're here now with a unique opportunity to make a difference in our community. Directing a, por uh, directing a portion of the property tax revenue from the future sale of Mission Health can significantly strengthen the infrastructure for housing, transit, and childcare. We know what needs to happen. We have a strong coalition of coalitions, family-friendly, affordable income. We're committed to working together on solid plans that are in place. Um, but we need, we need more support. So we appreciate county commissioners and city council's recognition and their support in the investments they've made to date in uh, the areas of housing, transportation, and childcare. But the time for us to all act is now. There are several ways to take action and support the work of family-friendly, affordable income. Get educated on the issues. Get a better understanding on the social determinants of health that we've heard about. And how FAB, FAB, family-friendly, affordable income, get that locked into your brain, can effectively address them. Visit the website, familyfriendlybuncom.org. Share the information with your friends and colleagues. And sign on as an endorser 
so that our leaders know that there's strong community support. And lastly, you have an opportunity to attend the upcoming County Commissioner's meeting on October 30th. A proposal has been made to invest $3.6 million in early childhood, and that's up for a vote. Uh, I implore you to come, listen, and participate. Provide your public comment. The time for us to act is now. We know what the needs are. We have the plans. We need the funding and community support. So thank you. I'd be curious to hear about um, kind of what you George Wood, who's the interim county manager right now, has talked about with county commissioners about not being too reliant on the mission sale money that would come into the county. And he's already talked about making cuts and this sort of thing that you know that would have to happen. So I just I'm just curious how you can kind of get uh, the county on board with this, you know, when they're they're looking at their financial straits the way that they are. So that's something that we've heard from a number of folks in the community. We can't be reliant upon one source, and we're, we're certainly well aware of that. Um, we have several opportunities in front of us, right? So the sale of mission, the hopeful sale of mission and the property tax is one piece of it. Um, the Dogwood Health Trust is another piece. But when we're talking about things like infrastructure, that's really something that we rely on county government for. That's not really a role for a foundation. The foundation could play an incredible role in helping us continue that work through services. Um, and Jasmine Beach Farr, county commissioner, has spoken to the need to look at all the various sources of revenue um, that we really need to pull together and bring together in order to do this work. Vicki from Just Economics. I'd just like to add that we think this is a unique opportunity that comes across kind of once in a generation uh, where we have an influx of public money um, without raising taxes on the individual taxpayer. And we would like to see that invested in investments that create a more family friendly, affordable income. So uh, while we we agree that, uh, that, that we should be looking at uh, not putting all of our eggs in one basket, that we should be diversifying um, where our income comes from. We also know that this is a unique opportunity for a county to not come from a place of deficit, not to come from a place of having some funding to be able to invest in these investments that make a more family friendly, affordable place to live here in Buncombe County. I'll just add one, one quick thing too. Uh, the county has uh, staked out um, early childhood and housing as part of their strategic priorities. And like Vicki said, this is a really unique opportunity for us. And uh, we've seen other counties around North Carolina trying to go big in these realms too. And uh, Durham and Mecklenburg and the early childhood space, and I believe Wake County's uh, big investment in housing um, over this last year really showed that this is a this is a place that county government can make a difference in these areas. And we think um, with this unique opportunity and, and money, we can go big too. I think it's reasonable to say there's two reasons to do this. One is we can't listen to these three women and really just want to do it because it's the right thing to do. But likewise, there, there is an ROI in investing on, a return on investment, in investing in the community and, 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 in, and in children and housing and transportation. Um, I mean, I can just look at the health benefits. There's plenty of data to show that healthy people uh, actually, actually are more likely to be at work and they're also, they're also more able to take care of their families and you don't require as many county services. And likewise, being able to go back and forth uh, to your job easily uh, to find affordable housing, have uh, childcare, just means that 
that more people are going to get to work, they're going to get their kids to school, they're going to get to their doctor's visits, they're going to take care of their issues. And when we have, we, we have from our poorer patients, we have a no-show rate at the office that's, that exceeds 15%. And they're not, it's not because they don't want to come, it's because they can't come. And that has an impact on health. So I, I would just say, you know, there's, there's a lot of angles and one of them is an economic an angle. It's a good investment. Any other questions? Back. So, Dr. Hyde, do you think it's fitting that something, money that's coming from a health system would benefit the <laughs> social determinants of health? <laughs> it's a good idea, but if it came from the profits on a fish hatchery, I think we should take that too. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was also curious about how much conversation has been had with the mission leaders and the dogwood health leaders to find out that, you know, make sure you're not stepping on toes and you're, you know, you're kind of working in a more collaborative effort than, you know, both chasing after the same, uh, the same goal, if, as it were. The money that we're talking about here is the public money that's coming in from property taxes, right. which is absolutely separate from what's coming into the Dogwood Foundation. Right. I'm talking about so, the mission, though. Like the yeah, absolutely. And so, so we absolutely think that you know we're in line um, with with this money that will belong to the city of Asheville and um, Buncombe County, and in line with the priorities that already exist in um, both within the city and and the county. And um, yeah, so I think that we're on the right track in, in terms of uh, collaboration with the city and county. I've had direct conversations with mission leadership. I mean, they would love, I think they would love this, they would love for the money to be used in this way because it is part of the long-term goal. I mean, the Dogwood Trust is created to address the social determinants of health. These are social determinants of health. That actually increases the the the, the value of the, of the of the sale to the community. So I don't I don't I think I mean, I'm confident that this would not be something they would do anything other than embrace it. Any other questions? I just want to make one last comment as she was saying I work in Asheville City Schools and I'm a substitute teacher and I see the need on a broader aspect and what happens when we don't address children at an early age and when we don't address early childhood education I've seen the effects so it's not something that's going to go away today it's not going to go away tomorrow this is going to be an ongoing issue for the next 10 years and I would say um in the work that we do, that we all do here. We do have to focus on the children, but we also have to embrace the family as well. And so if the family has a need and they're not able to make those ends meet, then it is a negative impact on the kids. So embrace families, let's all be family.